What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be covering a topic that a lot of you have been asking me for a long long time and that's V-Ray for Revit. So today's the day, I'm finally going to show you how to download and install the free version of V-Ray for Revit on your computer, how to turn it on in Revit and then how to how to use it in Revit and just to give you a quick overview of the whole plugin. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And follow me on all social media, I'm, try I'm trying to post there every day now. Okay, so here I am, I'm just Google, I just Googled uh, V-Ray for Revit and this is what you get and then just go for the first website. And this is the KS Group website, and this is the professional rendering software for architects and designers. And here you've got some overview of what you're getting, and here you've got some images, setups, yeah, all of that, key features. There's a bunch of tutorials over here, which is great. And then you go get to pricing, and then you kind of lose your mind because it's quite expensive for a rendering plugin for the software you're using. But anyway, if you go over here and you find academics license, if you just take the student version, it's I think it's like 72 euros or something like that, 74 euros. Yeah, so that's not that expensive, 74 euros a year. That's that's decent. But if you're getting the regular ones, I would think about it. How how bad do you want it? But anyway, so let's go down and here you can get started and you get a uh, free uh, trial. It's I think it's a 30 day trial. So that's what I'm going to be using. I've already created an account because it's just as simple as creating an email account. So I don't think there's any reason to go over that. And here you've got this is the V-Ray and the current version is 3.70.01 trial so this is just a trial version and make sure that here for the platform you select Revit and this will work with Revit 2015, 2016, 2017, 18 and 19 versions so if you have any of these uh, Revit versions this this plugin will work so you just hit here download and I've already done that so we don't have to wait so after you're finished uh, in your downloads uh, folder uh, this will appear so you just need to double click it to start the whole uh, installation process so here I'm just going to hit oh yes just to make sure and here you're going to have just your basic uh, user license agreement of course you're going to read this through very carefully and then you're just going to hit agree and then here for the versions I suggest you just select the version you have so I'm just going to leave Revit 2019 because that's the one that I'm going to be using it with uh, because you don't want to overclog your computer with a bunch of unnecessary software so then I'm just going to hit next and here we're just going to uh, destiny location, uh, destination location, basically the location where the file will be installed, that's okay, yeah, just go install now, and now we wait for a second for it to install. Okay, that was pretty much the installation, you just hit finish and that's that's pretty much it. And so now I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the plugin when, when we're inside of Revit. So here I've got the project that I've been using for a while, and now I'm just going to be showing you how to use the V-Ray setup for this here. So once you've installed a V-Ray on your computer, uh, when you go here and you've got all of these tabs in Revit, the uh, the one be before modify is going to become the V-Ray tab and here you've got a bunch of options. Now I've already set up a camera over here because naturally you're going to be using V-Ray for rendering so I've got already a view that I would like to render and over here if we go into renderings as you can see I've already done a simple Revit rendering so we're just going to kind of compare the results between uh, between what we what we can get from Revit and what we can get from V-Ray. So let's get back into into this 3D view and here uh, the cool thing about this is you can choose the the view that you're going to be using. So I can choose here 3D view 1 as that is the one that I'm using, but you can go to some completely different 
uh, the different view and you can still set up the rendering so you don't have to be in the actual view that you're that you're setting up which is kind of weird but okay so anyway and here we've got this render button and we've got this render production as well as uh, this render interactive now the difference is uh, render interactive allows you to kind of constantly be rendering it kind of works like uh, this ray trace option here in Revit so it kind of allows you to uh, uh, make adjustments and then see them in real life so it's constantly rendering over itself it's not going to be the the highest quality but once you've f f found the setup you like you then you switch to render production and then you get the best quality then we've got this uh, height show frame buffer that's important later on then for quality i'm just going to keep it at uh, yeah let's keep it at medium uh, for this one and that's basically where you set the whole quality it works just like the Revit engine and here whoa, it kind of escaped to the second monitor anyway so here's for the output you can either do uh, like this crop region and use one of the uh, one of these uh, presets or uh, you can go here and for the dimensions you can set the pixels or you can go for printer and uh, let me switch this to millimeters and let's make this a bit larger let's do 250 and it automatically uh, updates it so it's it stays within the proportions and here well, let's just leave it at 150 dpi this is just uh, the pixels per inch so how many pixels every square inch has on screen so uh, usually you would like to have 300 for printing but just for this draft view let's do a 150 anyway so let's close this off so uh, next we have artificial lighting and I don't have any lighting here but he this is the place where you would turn it on and turn it off then we have the V-Ray Sun which is basically like the rabbit Sun it I, I haven't really noticed any uh, massive changes and you have no light which is like turning off the Sun or turning off uh, daylight and you've got this dome light which I'm going to be covering a bit later on it's quite cool actually it's probably one of the most favorite features I found over here next we have the asset browser uh, now when we start rendering I'm going to show you how this works but this, this is actually the the main part why would you want to get uh, V-Ray for Revit uh, b because it allows you to change up materials and set them up with some higher quality materials some materials that look way more realistic than the ones you're uh, you're getting with Revit so this is like the the, the main part of, uh, of V-Ray this is this is what you're getting and you've got these RPC proxies which uh, 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 they they allow you to select uh, trees and uh, vegetation and then you can uh, find uh, you can find a view rays uh, own trees and then you can exchange them so you're going to have some higher quality planting in your uh, in your views and there's material maps I'm going to be showing you this later as well and this global materials which just allows you to make some great effects and uh, we've got some exposure value which is uh, pretty basic so that we've got some settings so this I'm going to be getting into uh, later on uh, in some other tutorials but this is just some basic settings and then you've got this online help but okay with the, this uh, overview out of the way let's let's start creating some renderings so I like to uh, move Revit out of the way for some reason you can either have this uh, render this window open and then when you go here and render interactive and you start rendering and wait for a second to start uh, this window can kind of go behind Revit sometimes and or in front of it so I just like to have them kind of side by side like this on the monitor and anyway so it's now rendering and you can make actual changes even in the model over here or let's move this out of the way a bit let's go into level one yeah and if I move the tree as you can see the tree moved over here if I move this one yeah and as you can see so basically you can make uh, changes in the model in any view and it will uh, adapt live over here so that's that's quite cool but the the point of this isn't just so you can uh, move things around and see them in real life the point is so you can make some adjustments to the actual rendering so uh, let's go back to our 3d view one and let's go back into V-Ray 
let's see okay V-Ray and let's start making some changes over here so uh, you can make changes as far as uh, light so maybe we can change okay maybe we can change this exposure up or you can change the sunshine to go from daylight to some artificial halogen light but I like to keep it either average daylight or just daylight and let's bring the sunshine back down so you can play around with this setup but let's now jump into the materials because that's the the most interesting part so here for the asset browser you can actually come in and you can change the material that's here in the model so let me illustrate how that works so let's uh, search for gypsum uh, wallboard that I used and no it's not going to search it immediately let's see okay gypsum wallboard and you can go here and change it from autogen which basically means it, it's using the regular Revit uh, regular Revit material you can change it to V-Ray material and now you can use the V-Ray uh, library so let's change it to some concrete and here I'm just going to use this one this is the largest like sample it's four meters so let's open that up and as you can see now we've got all of these small samples it's like small cubes and that's wrong because it's four uh, by four meters you need to open this up and you need to exchange this from 30 centimeters to 400 centimeters for it to be accurate and now if I zoom out a bit and give it a second to update let's see what we get yeah and now it exchanged it for this uh, quite realistic uh, concrete material so that's that's quite cool another thing uh, you can you can do is let's exit out of this now let me show you that dome light uh, option so you've got this dome light over here and it what it allows you to do is it allows you to make your renderings dark just kidding uh, it basically covers the the whole surrounding with an image or color and then it uses that image or color to uh, to cast light on uh, your uh, uh, on your model because uh, realistically when you have your your building in nature it's going to have different kinds of light coming from different directions so if we go here and uh, turn on this HDR option it, it kind of covers the image all the way around uh, it covers the background with this image and then it uses this image to cast light upon your model so as you can see here I can even rotate this image and it will change the way it casts light and because this is a sunset image you can see it's got it's got a nice little a nice little orange pinkish feel so that that looks nice and here you can just offset the height of it so you can set up the the background if you wanted to to fit maybe better in the the whole rendering so we can turn this off right now and uh, let's go here maybe adjust this exposure value bring it up just a little bit yeah this looks a lot better oops do we have something else yeah we've got uh, these effects over here so you can uh, defocus it if you want to for some reason so you can make it all blurry but I don't see the point of that and you can give it an optical vignette which is quite nice actually it's quite subtle you, I mean you can add it quite subtly but it kinda brings the whole image together I, I really like this effect so anyway let's cancel out of this and let's let's try making a real rendering so how do you save this what what do you do with this image it's just endlessly processing so let's go just over here and go into render production so now it's switching from this interactive rendering into actual rendering so if I maximize the screen it's actually rendering now and you can actually make a live adjustments to this like you would in Photoshop but you can do it from Revit or from V-Ray so you just open these uh, effects over here so you can go to exposure and open this up and then maybe you can just play around with the exposure or contrast or highlight burn okay so once your rendering is completed you're probably thinking well where is it and you can open this menu over here and here we've got your project gallery so for the 3d view we've got nothing but for 3d view 1 we actually have a couple and then you can 
either save to disk or you can save to project which is even better so when you click here and let's exit out of this and this and this and everything and now if I scroll down here to renderings I'm going to have this rendering this is the one we did in V-Ray and this is the standard one so as you can see it looks a lot more realistic once done in uh, in V-Ray and the materials from V-Ray look a lot better than the ones from from Revit and this is just scratching the surface this is just using the default settings I've only changed one material but you can change the grass you can make it look like actual grass you can exchange these trees so it can significantly improve the the renderings uh, on on your for your projects okay so that was the general overview uh, for V-Ray and I'll try to do as many uh, other cool tutorials on how to use on tips and tricks or just cool features from V-Ray for Rabbit okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day